problem together e to the 2x minus e to the x plus 6 equals 8 and our goal is to solve for x now whether you're someone who can solve this in their sleep or if you shut down the minute you saw this <laughs> or if you're somewhere in between it doesn't matter here, there is no concept of ahead, or behind, or average, or anything. There are no grades. There is no judgment. You are where you are. And that is perfect. Perfect. So I encourage you to just relax. This is a problem that's usually introduced around pre-calculus, sometimes in, you know, advanced algebra, really whenever you learn about logarithms, logarithms. And this problem is particularly cool because we're going to apply logarithms with algebra. So math really does and this is basically a puzzle, which can be fun. At least I think so. <laughs> so the first thing that I notice is that we're trying to solve for x. And x is in the exponent here and here. Even though e is a letter, it's not a variable here. e in math is a constant. It has a value of out 2.718 uh, something 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 I think it goes on and on and on and on so there are infinitely many digits kind of like pi so e is just our symbol and it's a constant value so our only variable here in this e equation is x and it just happens to be in the exponents in both, okay? So when you learn about logarithms, it's a way to handle situations when our variable is in the exponent. So using only algebra tools, we wouldn't know how to necessarily solve this, right? So we have to play around with it a little. So, some people can see a pattern right off the bat. If you can't, it's not like you're stupid. It's not like you missed the math train and you're forever doomed. It's tricky. And really, it's not like people who get it right away just are geniuses, okay? It's just about pattern recognition. So, let me give you an example of just starting somewhere. Even if you don't understand the pattern or what to do right away, I encourage you to just try because sometimes I wish it were the case, but we can't just stare at this and get an answer. It's just not going to really work, just staring. <laughs> so just try something. So normally for algebra, you know, it's pretty common to attempt to isolate your x on one side and then get x equals something. That's usually what it means to solve for x. So it's common to try to get all your variables on one side and all everything else on the other. So you might attempt to do that here. And I encourage you to just try, right? So you can just put question mark. We're exploring. It's okay. <laughs> so, we can try e to the 2x minus e to the x. Then I move the 6 over to the other side because it doesn't have an x in it. So, 8 minus 6 is 2. So, at this point, if you need to review e, Algebra, that's fine. But 
I move the 6 over by doing 8 minus 6 so I get 2 now with this with this here I see that I can't actually solve for x still because I can't combine these two terms now we might think that it would be e to the 2x minus x that's pretty tempting because you know we have e and e here so we might as well do 2x minus x but that's actually not that's actually not an exponent rule so if we need to review exponent rules or rules for exponents we can definitely do that but we can't just do e to the 2x minus x equals 2 now I just realized that you know 2x minus x is x if I actually did go this incorrect way I just dug myself into a hole because I think that I solved for x here, it's actually coincidentally the answer for this, even if we went the wrong way, like we actually broke math with an incorrect step. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that would be totally coincidental. So if we did try to put x on one side and the numbers on the other, we can see that we can't do much more with this. Of course, there's not one way to solve any problem. We have to adapt to what we're doing. So we could graph this if we wanted to do. Graph e to the 2x minus e to the x on your calculator or on the computer and see what x values or value or none correspond to a y coordinate of 2. Or you can go ahead and move the 2 over here and find zeros for e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 2, okay? But either way, trying to solve directly for x here isn't really going to get us anywhere, it seems. But that's perfectly okay. We're just playing. We're just trying. Maybe along the way we discover we need to review other stuff. But that's perfectly fine. And this first equation is still equivalent to our original problem. So if you're trying to do this, you know, on a test, maybe a standardized test where you have multiple choice answers, this still might be helpful in some way. But let's try to solve this algebraically and directly and get an exact value without our calculator. So we're going to backtrack since trying to isolate x isn't helping. So we're just going to go and work with our original problem again. And that's perfectly okay. Instead, I'm going to look at this a little bit further. I'm going to look for a pattern. I notice that e to the 2x is actually e to the x squared. I even care about that? Well, first of all, this is an exponent rule. Something to the power of something all raised to the power of something means I can keep that base and then just multiply these two exponents. Again, this is an exponent rule. Exponent rule. But if you still need to review those, that's perfectly fine. But you can see that x e to the x all squared is e to the x times 2. And x times 2 is 2x simply because multiplication is commutative. So x times 2 and 2x are the same. So why would I want to rewrite e to the 2x as e to the x squared? That's because I also notice that I have an e to the x here, which is cool. Because now I can have this piece and this piece. We have e to the x and e to the x here. So that means our original question is really e to the x squared minus e to the x. And then I can move this um, 8 over here. But let's write the original problem first. So the reason I'm going 
going to do this is because I can now let just put a little placeholder for e to the x. So I'm just going to let y equal e to the x. That's my choice. I'm going to let y equal e to the x. It doesn't matter what variable or what letter I choose. I'm just going to pick y. And that's cool because I can rewrite this equation as y squared minus y plus 6 equals 8. Now I actually have a quadratic problem. This is something that we learn how to solve in algebra. If you need to do review quadratics, I encourage you to. Of course, we will get to all of these topics um, here on this channel eventually. <laughs> but I'm trying to show you that math just really builds on itself. So, how to solve this? We can rearrange it so that we have the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So we'll move this 8 over here by subtracting 8. So plus 6 minus 8 is minus 2 equals zero. At this point, before we jump into using the uh, quadratic equation, you know, the negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, we can actually first try to factor this which we can. Equals zero. So we're factoring this quadratic here. So if we need to review factoring, we can. And I plan on remaking some of my older videos as well, just to help is one of those videos. I have one, but I hope that I can keep uh, working and remaking old videos. But this is how you factor this. Notice that if we do first, outer, inner, last, we'll get this negative 2 and 1 multiply to be negative 2. And then our outside will be y. Our inside is minus 2y. And y minus 2y is minus y. So now that we factored it, we have y minus 2 times y plus 1 equals 0. So that means either this thing equals 0 or this thing equals 0. Or y plus 1 equals 0. Why is that? Because if two things multiply to equal 0, at least one of them, or both, right? This or this or both but at least one of them has to equal zero. If you think about it, anything times zero is zero, but that's also the only way you can get a product of zero. If you take any two numbers, let's say two and five, you get ten. There's no way that the product would be zero unless one of them, or both, is equal to zero. So you know that either this thingy equals zero, or this thingy equals zero. That means either y equals 2 or y equals negative 1. Okay? Well, that's great and all, but we're trying to solve for x. So now I'm all confused. How did we go from x to y? What is y now? How are we going on this huge detour? Well, we let y equal e to the x. So we chose that. So if y equals if y equals 2, but we set y equals e to the x, remember y equals e to the x, that's our choice. We can just plug that back in to solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. e to the x equals 2, or e to the x equals negative 1. So really what we did is we converted the whole question in terms of a different variable y. And then we solved for y using algebra, but now we have to go 
back and actually answer the question in terms of x. Now this is where logarithms come in. This is actually equivalent to saying that x equals the natural log of 2. So this exponent, logarithms and exponents are inverse functions and this ln means natural So if we need to review or learn logarithms, logs slash natural logs, ln is natural log, we definitely can do that as well. <laughs> but this is equivalent to x equals ln2. And if you need to prove that to yourself, you can also just take the natural log on both sides and know that the natural log of e to the x is x. And here, if I did the same thing, here I would say x is the natural log of negative 1, but we can't take the natural log of negative numbers. So this is actually no solution. And you can also think of that as e to the power of something equals negative 1. e to the power of anything cannot ever be negative. It just doesn't make sense, because even if you have a negative exponent, that's a reciprocal, so that would be 1 over something. It's still not going to ever be negative. So this is actually, this would have no solution. So our final answer is x equals ln2. That's it, just one answer. So, if we were to plug back in, x equals ln2 here, ln2 here, we would probably have to use our log rules, so I won't show the exact checking, but you can see that e to the 2 ln2 minus e to the ln2 plus 6 equals 8. And so, just a heads up, the rule that you'll really need to remember here pretty much is that um, e to the ln of x is x for any x value, and I think you'll also need to use the fact that if I have 2 ln 2, it's the same as the natural log of 2 to the power of 2, which is ln 4. I think with these two rules, you can actually show yourself that you actually got the correct answer. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, I know that this was kind of crazy <laughs> to try and let y equal something, but if this is the first time that you're seeing this trick, I hope that you think it's as cool as I do and did, and I think it's quite fun actually. So of course, from this, we got a whole bunch of other topics to go review, and I would absolutely love to do that, and I will be continuing to build onto this stuff.